In today's famous reading from the Gospel of Luke, we are presented with the wonderful image of Zacchaeus climbing a tree to see the Lord, who is just walking by. More than likely, Christ had not managed this area before, due to the great flat crowds which were there waiting for him. Many were likely Jewish people, while a good number were likely Gentiles. Zacchaeus, a man who we could likely assume was not a devout Jew, climbed the tree just to see Jesus walk by, as he knew there was something special about this one man from Nazareth. Two weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to have a similar experience. One of my friend's brother works at the White House, so we got tickets to see Pope Francis visit the White House in his first official visit to the U.S. Similar to Tim's experience from last week when he told him to talk to us about the House and the Senate, there were so many people there. These people ranged from devout Catholics to modern-day psychiatrists. In actuality, in these events in D.C., the Pope was addressing the tax collectors and the lawmakers of the country. They, like Zacchaeus, just wanted to see who this Pope was, and I couldn't tell why. He was more than a celebrity. He was something special. It took until later that afternoon to begin to realize why everyone reacted so unusually to him. I went to see a few friends of mine who are studying in Boston Seminary outside of the Basilica, where the Pope was saying Mass later that day. I couldn't find them, and my phone was nearly dead, because iPhone batteries aren't good at all. So I decided to head back to the train station to meet my friends and return to Baltimore. I got talking to a priest at the train station by chance, because he was wearing a Benedictine college cap, which is a small school out of Kansas, which I had been to a couple years ago. And we were talking, and by chance he told me that I could get a last minute ticket to the Mass. He said, go to that man in the blue over there. So that's what I did, and lo and behold, I got a ticket to the Mass. So, moral story, if anyone tells you to go to talk to a man in a blue, go to him. I'll give you something good. <laughs> the ticket was for standing room, far from the altar, but I didn't care. I especially didn't care when the Pope did his procession, and he was there in front of me, waving his classic Pope Francis wave. You know the little wave like that. Fifteen feet separated us, and this moment was special. Seeing him this close was not special for only me, but everyone present, it seemed. In fact, throughout his whole procession, people kept climbing trees to see this man. Sound familiar? As time has passed, I've had time to think why this man is so special to all people, not just Catholics. The reason is simple. He's a true vicar of Christ. Gandhi famously said, if I ever met a true Christian, I'd become a Christian, which is a big blow to us for sure. But apparently, Gandhi never met Pope Francis because Francis is the best example for us as a person who truly acts like Christ, or is truly a Christian. He does this through love. He, like Jesus, loves all people, criminals, tax collectors, politicians, etc. All are loved by both men, Francis and Jesus. One of the most moving images from the papal visit is a scene I'm sure we've all seen. During one of his papal parades, he pulls over to go and bless an individual in a wheelchair. I have no idea who this man is, what disabilities he had, or even what faith he associated with, if any. Nor did Pope Francis, I'm sure. But he went over, blessed the man, and kissed the man. Love. To me, this moment truly showed how Pope Francis is Christian, or Christ-like. All people, of all different walks of life, went to Christ for healing, just as thousands of people came to meet Francis, wherever he was, while in the U.S., and wherever he goes, and both meet them with love and not judgment. So often we look at Pope Francis as not being the judgy type, which of course is fantastic. But what I find most compelling, and what I believe we all need to work on, is that he does not only not judge, but goes out. Weeks after being installed as pontiff, reports circulated about him leaving his quarters in secret to help the homeless and miss the criminals. Jesus, likewise, did not just stay in Bethlehem, in Jerusalem, his whole life. He went out, and we must do the same. We must love the truly vulnerable in this world. And I have found three groups to be the most vulnerable in today's society. Those with disabilities, the unborn, and the elderly. As a Christian, all of us make, must make more time to deliberately go out and minister to these people. There's a story about a priest who gives a tour of a church that I'm sure is highly fictional, but 
but I've heard him many times, I think it's applicable to the situation. He gives a tour of the church, and he talks about the altar, the tabernacle, and the icons. And at the end, they all look quite bored. So out of desperation, he asks them, what's the most important part of the church? And a kid raises his hand, and he says, yes. And the kid replies, the exit sign. And the priest, out of complete desperation, asks why. And then the teen, saving the priest's sanity and probably his vocation, says that it is far more important how we act when we exit the church than how we act when we enter. We must go out and we must love. These three groups of the most vulnerable have great importance to me, as I work with the ARC when I am home in Massachusetts, which devotes all of its time to assisting adults with disabilities find jobs in the real world. I also work in a nursing home kitchen, bringing food to the elderly, but never cooking food. And lastly, I have been gifted with the gift of life by a Heavenly Father, but also through the will of my earthly mother and father. I see the disabled and elderly as some of the most loving people in the world, but also some of the least vocal. And although the unborn do not love in the womb, they are truly the most voiceless of today's society. Loving those most vulnerable means giving those with no voices an actual speaking about injustices towards those with disabilities, speaking out about abortion, and speaking out about lack of funding for senior care and services are actions we must do to be concerned Christians. These are the true people with no voice. Giving them a voice is what Christ would do. Giving them a voice is what Pope Francis does. And giving them a voice is what Christians ought to do more of, myself included. Giving them a voice is true love. Once we give them a love and a voice, we will please God and become better Christians. To conclude, I think it would be fitting to end with a quote of Pope Francis when he was visiting Philadelphia. He said, I take this opportunity to thank all of those of whatever religion who have sought to serve the God of peace by building cities of brotherly love, by caring for our neighbors in need, by defending the dignity of God's gift of life in all its stages, by defending the cause of the poor and the immigrant. All too often, those most in need of our help are unable to be heard. You are their voice, and many of you have faithfully made their cry heard. So let us go out and speak in love. <laughs>